How's it going, everybody? This is Beat the Bush. Have you noticed how some people, they're just able to complete more tasks in a short period of time? Well, today I'm going to talk about maximizing your efficiency. When you're trying to maximize efficiencies, mainly about removing the redundant and boring tasks from your life. In order to do this, we need to figure out how much your time is worth and also how much removing the frustration from your life is worth to you. The average American spends about one hour a day looking for things. Now, this is not just looking for one single object. Yes, sometimes we might have that one single object that we spend like half an hour, one hour to look for. I know this morning I misplaced my hot water bottle. It wasn't at the two places I most frequently put it. For some reason, I left it somewhere else. Now just from this, I spent 10 minutes looking for one single item and I anticipate I might spend about half an hour a day looking for stuff just as well. Boosting efficiency is about making things that you do frequently go faster. The question is, how much should you spend in order to make a certain thing faster for you? And how much faster is it going to make for you? Now, let's say you recently switched from using one product to another and using that new product saves you one minute a day every single day for an entire year. This is 365 minutes. 365 minutes a day means six hours a year. You're going to save six hours of your life from just convenience and you can apply the six hours to something else. It is not worth spending money to reduce the time it takes you to do a certain task if you take those six hours and you just squander it somewhere else. So let's say you make $20 an hour outside of your regular job. This is very important that you're able to work additional hours and every single hour that you work, you're going to make an additional amount. This is as opposed to if you're on a salary job, every additional hour that you make is not going to make you an additional amount other than certain promises that you might get a raise. Now that's a topic for a different discussion. So let's just assume it's $20 an hour. So let's say you spend the six hours wisely and you use this to earn extra cash, $20 an hour. So that first single year, you're going to earn $120, which will then pay for whatever product that you bought for itself. So if you actually use this product and it's going to save you one minute every single day, and you're going to apply this time towards making more money, then you can actually spend $120 and recoup this money within the first year. If let's say this product that you buy is going to last two years before it becomes too obsolete to use, then well, you can spend $240. Now these calculations is kind of hand waving, but it serves as a good purpose to just kind of go, well, yeah, you know, I use this product this often and this product looks like it's going to last me this long. And you can just make some rough calculations to see if it's going to be worth it for you. Generally, the more time that you can use it, the more you can afford to spend on it. The more time that it can save you, the more money that you can spend on this item. Now, so far, all of this has been sort of abstract. Let me apply it to a few examples for you guys. I recently analyzed my hard drive usage. I have seven external hard drives. I actually took out a timer and measured how much time it takes me to remove this hard drive, search for the one I actually need, connect it to a cable, and then connect it to my computer. It took me a total of about 30 seconds to do this. And this is assuming I know which hard drive the data I want is in. Now I do this about once every single week, mainly because it's so hard to access the information in there that I kind of dread using those hard drives, but I still end up using it once a week. So 30 seconds once a week for one whole year is about 26 minutes. So instead of fishing for all these hard drives, I decided to get a USB hub to connect all of these hard drives together so that I can just power all of them on at the same time. Then it becomes only pushing one button. It'll take me a few seconds rather than trying to set up the hard drive, connect the cables, etc. So this all means I'm going to save about half an hour every single year, but it also gives me additional utility because as soon as I have this hub, have this all connected and ready to go, I probably will use it more than once a week, I'll probably switch to using it every single day. There's a compounding effect of efficiency here because if you make something highly accessible and easy to use, then you're likely going to use it more often, boosting your productivity. Now let's talk a little bit about personal versus work life. At your regular salary job, you're likely not going to spend any money on the tools that you use at work. I suggest to request from your boss certain things that boost productivity, monitors being one of them, keyboards, mice. Now, if your boss does not approve of buying a keyboard or a mouse, I would even consider buying my own. A cheap version, of course, maybe $20, $30, it's well worth it. This is very important to label all the things that you bring to work so that you can bring them with you when you leave your job. 
job. Now, I probably would not buy a monitor for work purposes because it's way too expensive, but for a mouse and keyboard, you can get generic versions that are very, very good mechanical ones for $30, $40 or so. Now, here's another example that I grappled with, which is getting a high-speed memory card. Making these 4K videos generates a lot of data. When I transfer my data, into my computer, it takes about six minutes or so. However, if I get a faster memory card, it will take about two minutes. So this means every single day, maybe three days a week, I'm gonna save about four minutes. That's about 600 minutes every single year. That's about 10 hours of waiting. Now you can say, okay, I'm going to do this pipeline method while the data is transferring. I'm gonna do something else useful. But what I found myself doing when the data is transferring is I usually just browse the web or do something else. So you can actually see the main thing that I want to do is just transfer those files in and it's keeping me from you know, proceeding with whatever I need to do. Another example is a tripod. This particular tripod that I'm using now where the camera is sitting on, this is the only tripod that I'm using. When I go record somewhere else, I actually use the same tripod. I actually, you know, move the all the adjustments and then make it higher, lower, you know, I do all kinds of adjustment. But whenever I come back to this set, I always have to readjust everything and it takes me a few minutes, five minutes every single time. This means that every single time I wanna record something else, um, I have to dread coming back to this set and readjusting this tripod just so that it would fit you know, the framing again. I'm not gonna go through all the calculations, but you can imagine if I do this every single day, that's about five minutes, and this time that is being taken up to readjust everything, really, really adds up, especially for something that you use every single day. So that's why you see a lot of professionals, things that they use appears to be a lot more streamlined than the usual. For a person that uses it only once and then you know just forgets about it, or maybe if you just have some new idea, something that you're trying out that you are not doing every single day again, then that's okay to you know go and do those things, spend that extra time to do it. But if you find yourself doing something over and over again every single day, you might want to look at where you're actually spending all your time and trying to minimize that time so that you save yourself that time and then you can work on more important things. Yet another example is organization. It's so important to be organized so that you're not looking for things. As I said at the beginning of the video, people spend about one hour a day looking for things. If you are so organized that at one glance, you can see everything that you have, you know where everything is. There is no question of ever spending any time looking for things, then you can be a more efficient person. You can do more that you want to do. It's like gaining extra life for yourself if you are an organized person. You remove this need to ever search for anything. So how do you become organized with everything? You just label a lot of things. Label the cables, label the boxes, label your organizational drawers. I personally got a label maker recently. I used to just write on little pieces of paper, get tape, and then just use those as labels. It turns out doing that takes too much time. Yes, it kind of works. There's no way that I'm gonna make a hundred of those little labels by hand. So therefore, if you get a label maker, it's something that will speed this process up and allow you to just label a lot more items, saving you time as well in the process of organizing yourself. Thanks for watching this video. I hope these methods help you make yourself a more efficient person. It's sort of like supercharging yourself. Think about it. You can do so much more if you're not looking for stuff. If you're interested in supporting the channel, check out my Audible link down in the video description below where you can get a free audiobook. If you don't like this audiobook or this service, you can cancel it before the subscription expires and still keep this audiobook for free and help benefit this channel. Don't forget to give me a like on this video, push that subscribe button and ring that bell icon. Thanks for watching. Thank you.